It's a real pleasure to present in front of you today, and thank you for letting me have in this talk among these great talks we had. Uh, so I'm Eamon, I'm a PhD student at Wiedemann's Group in Northern Germany. And in our group, we are doing uh, computer simulations to study the 3D architecture of chromatin. And uh, I'm gonna give you a short presentation today of the one of the latest projects we've been working on lately, and it's part of the uh, SPP uh, project. We have here the usual hierarchical genome organization from territories, compartments, tasks to loops. And since we are interested in the chromatin organization, we've always uh, asked the question, how these chromatin loops, uh, loop, uh, loops are looking like? What is the 3D architecture? Is it really just simple as we see it now? It's complicated and could bring insight if we study the inner context of those loops. So uh, for this reason, we modeled it. And before that, we had the pre-established model. It's a coarse-grained model of uh, chromatin. Uh, it's uh, basically the bead zone string model where we model uh, sealant, uh, um, I'll say nucleosomes as sphere cylinders connected by uh, segments of cylinder of DNA, linker DNA. And with uh, another model called six angle models where we have additional degrees of freedom and where we implement the basic mechanics of chromatin folding with uh, bending, twisting, stretching, electrostatic energies, and excluded volume energies. And this is our pre-established model that we enhanced with introducing uh, CCF and cohesin. So as, as you might already know, cohesin is uh, an SMC protein complex that has a ring shape and um, that performs the loop extrusion process and blocks when it encounters the correctly oriented CTCF. So we were interested more not in the loop extrusion process, but into the uh, resistance time of this cohesion structure. For this reason, we developed this uh, coarse grained model of uh, cohesion, where it is basically a ring of 40 nanometer, um, of 20 nanometer radius, and the two uh, cohesion, uh, cohesion SMC heads with a two nanometer uh, radius. And we developed uh, harmonic uh, potentials, so stretching and bending torsion between these two cohesin heads to keep the cohesin structure closed. And also we developed potentials to the binding sites at the level of CTCF, uh, binding sites with uh, the DNA to keep them uh, embraced inside the loop during the residence time. And for the simulation of the preparation of the fiber to uh, the state of loop anchor, of course, we need to perform loop extrusion process. So since we are not interested in this uh, part, uh, we are only interested in having the correctly position of uh, loops uh, structures. So what we did, we applied an attraction potential at the level of uh, CTF binding sites to bring it close so we can have the correctly um, positions of all the structures. And then we trigger and activate our cohesion potentials that we developed to start our simulations. Uh, so here we are using an ab initio approach. So this is a very abstract uh, view of the work we've been doing here. So at the beginning, we started uh, with preparing uh, 12 different systems. So six with depletion of CTCF and cohesion, and six with presence. So we can compare the effect of cohesion and CTF. And those in presence, uh, also depletion, we made two categories to study the nucleosome positioning, the effect of nucleosome positioning. So we have experimentally derived data and synthetic data where we developed uh, equidistant nucleosome positions for synthetic data. And also the experimental one, we uh, got it from the uh, mna sec data of um, HUVAC cells, chromosome 14. So first we get the occupancy of the nucleosome positions that uh, then uh, data, and then we apply the, our notebook simulator where we avoid the overlapping of nucleosomes and uh, errors to obtain the exact positions of nucleosomes of the fiber. Then we convert it to our format supported by our simulation software, and then also we insert CTCF, the uh, CTCF of the correct positioning that we retrieved from ChIPSEC data. 
and then we uh, um, convert it into our latest uh, uh, format of 3D cross-grained model. For the simulation part, first we do some simulation, uh, some uh, simulated annealing for relaxation of our system. Uh, secondly, we start this uh, loop extrusion process by our attraction potentials. And when we have all correct positions, then what we do basically is just activate in the crazy potentials and build the ring around the uh, chromatin loop. And then we start doing our simulations based on Monte Carlo. So Monte Carlo is basically an algorithm that allows us to obtain statistically uh, relevant confirmations of this uh, chromatin structures, also together with the replica exchange procedure uh, for uh, bare sampling. And when, as a result, we get a set of configuration, possible configurations that we analyze at the end with various methods that I'm going to go talk about now. So now I strike ahead to the results we obtained, to be short on you. So uh, actually, this is what the cohesion uh, chromatin loop looks like. As you can see here on the left, this is our synthetic systems with equidistant nucleus on positions. And here, we developed a small loop, medium loop, and large loop here, going this way. So from uh, 24 uh, kbp to 41. And also, this is our um, experimentally derived systems. Also, we derived three uh, sizes of loops, so we can also study the impact of size of loop, OK? So here, uh, in this plot here, what we did, we defined uh, segments of two KBP sequentially on the fiber. And what we did, um, we calculated the Euclidean distance between them because our system uh, is made of beads with the exact uh, position of each bead and the orientation vector. So it's a lot of data to get from uh, our simulation results. And then we calculated the distances. And here we see obviously that D is depleted. And here, P in presence of cohesion and CCF. And we see, uh, notably, uh, a big rise of a context between uh, these segments of chromatin in presence of CCF and cohesion. Also, uh, we can see here experimental had also significant rise of a context with respect to, uh, uh, so synthetic has a significant uh, rise with respect to experimental data. This also drive attention to the effect of nucleosome distribution and the number of contacts that can occur. Here we uh, study the contact probability. So on the left side, we have the road data. On the right side, we have the, me uh, the mean with the variance. And what we can see here, for example, in plot D and F, is we uh, compare the, the presence with depletion. And of course, here without counting the neighbors, so we don't get uh, errors in the calculation. So only we are interested in the long range contacts and not the neighboring contacts. So here we ignore the neighboring regions to have accurate results. And as you can see here, so in prisons has really a significant rise in context with respect to depletion, while here we compare the experimental against the synthetic data, where in uh, synthetic we had also raised significance, which also drive attention to the importance of nucleosome positioning in the amount of context that might occur uh, in every position, because also this one here was uh, divided by the loop length to see that each position will have uh, more possibility to be in contact with other positions. And this here will give us an information that I will show you at the end of the slide. Uh, here is our uh, contact maps. So um, we developed uh, binary contact maps and probability heat maps. So what the probability is, if there is a contact, we just plot it. So we want to see all possible contacts. For our probability heat maps, we just say the most probable confirmation to occur or contact to occur, then we plot it. Here, uh, we defined contact here as uh, any distance below 20 nanometer. Here, contact is any distance between 50 nanometers, since probability we want to see uh, the most significant contacts possible. And here on top, also, we see all different uh, sizes of systems that we define. As, as you can see here, uh, this is uh, experimental uh, systems, and this is synthetic systems. Here, we notice also uh, this uh, pattern, special patterns that are very pertinent. You see here, it's probability, and it's quite dark. 
we see here uh, this dot here, which means uh, there is the loop. And also these patterns that are very dark, which actually is very interesting thing that we found out, which is called, uh, we defined as a micro loops that might occur only by thermal fluctuations and no need for other uh, cohesion structures to be in the system to have these uh, substructures or subpads. Summarizing of what we did, so we were interested in this region here specifically. We made our experimental uh, systems, studied them. This is the heat maps, and we notice these structures here that in the, when visually we see it like this. So it's actually a micro loop that is there for uh, some time, but without any additional cohesion ring. So it's just there, it occurs. And these conformations are affected by the size of the loop, nucleus on positioning also. And uh, here, for example, we notice another type of loop. This is for synthetic systems, which is hierarchical loops and coiled loops. When it's, it's really long loop here, that rises significantly the contact. This, the reason why we notice uh, um, higher context in uh, synthetic systems. Here at the end, it presumed consequences of transition. Of course, it will have a high impact on transcription. For example, we noticed that these microloops that are emerging, they can uh, come close together. So not only one, but many microloops, they come close. And this uh, emphasize actually on the theory of additive effects of enhancers. So we can have uh, many enhancers coming to one promoter. And this, uh, the significance of uh, many distant region coming close, and this is many microloops coming also close together. Here, our views. So if you are curious like us to see how chromatin loops are looking like, what's the, <laughs> the chromatin loops are looking like, we developed this uh, TRJ uh, viewer. It's an open source web tool. You can uh, use it to visualize uh, cohesion mediated chromatin loops. We can also provide you with uh, high images. Also, we, can, we develop two of the augmented reality tools to better visualize uh, those structures. Uh, today, there is uh, the possible session of my colleague, and you can enjoy seeing his poster, and we brought with us our HoloLens. If you want to see in the poster room, uh, cohesion mediated loops floating in the room, <laughs> it would be interesting, really. And uh, if you want, may ask me what to do next. So in the previous uh, work we've studied, uh, we emphasized more on the inner loop context, what's occurring inside the inner loop. And we are interested also in the outer loop context, also if the inner loops are gonna change if we develop many loops. So this is the next steps. We are going to develop uh, a lot of loops in, uh, in the neighboring loops. And at the end, uh, I would thank uh, my group that worked hard and contributed to this work. Uh, also, uh, the SPP uh, project and DFG for funding our work. And the uh, cost, of course, for uh, receiving us. I thank you so much for your attention. Hi, uh, very interesting work. So I, I was curious, so I think in your model, maybe I missed the point, so you, you did not explicitly model loop extrusion. So you, you just have a loop uh, between CTCF sites. Yes, because yes. we're interested more into the residence time. So for loop extrusion, we just apply an attraction potential to bring the chromatin uh, segments into close proximity with attraction. And then when it arrive at correct positioning, we derive by four nanometers to be embraced inside the loop. Then what we do, we just simply active the cohesion potential and that's it. So we are interested more into the uh, uh, residence time, not into the loop extrusion process. Okay, but it seems also in your structure that sometimes you have some supercoiling, I mean, from what we would see. So did you integrate some topoisomerase uh, activity in your model to also simulate somehow what's happening in vivo where you have this relaxation? No, no, it's just, uh, it's the just normal potential, yeah, it occurs. It occurs uh, during the simulation. But the cohesion, does it fix the linking number of your loop? Does it what? The cohesion, the fact that you have a cohesion in the ring at yeah. the end in your simulation, does it fix the linking number? The linking number? Yeah, the fact that you have some constraint and so... Yeah, yeah but since cohesion also is a dynamic structure, so we have these potentials that allow a slight uh, bending and torsion, but without breaking the ring. Yeah, thanks for, for this interesting talk. I was wondering about the shape of your loops. Yes. Um, because you actually see 
this loop-like appearance, but I was expecting just a more blob-like um, structure of, of DNA. Um, so can you comment on that? Uh, you mean the structures that we found? Yeah, I mean, you have the base of the loop with the cohesin, then you see an actual loop with yeah, yeah. all the histones, or, uh, nucleosomes and yeah, so on. But yeah. I would expect that they kind of form a more, more blob-like structure uh, and doesn't, you know, don't show a, a really extended loop all the time. So, so why do you see so many long loops? Or is my expectation wrong? Uh, this is the result of the simulations. <laughs> so I, I don't know how, what to comment on that. Just think about the persistence length of DNA, which is quite short compared to your loop size. So Persi where's the kind of the, the stability of this loop structure coming from? So I would expect that the DNA is much more randomly organized. Yes, it is. In the experimental derived system, actually, I told you that uh, for synthetic fiber, we defined it equidistance. So we defined uh, uh, five nanometer segments of DNA, linker DNA. But for the experimentally derived system, what we do, actually, we take the nucleosome positions from the experiments, and then we, we just build uh, the linker DNA uh, according to those uh, uh, positions of nucleosome. So it's, it's clearly variant. If you see here, for example, this is experimental. If you see the linker DNA, hey, it varies. It's not equal in the, in the second one. I was wondering how important is the uh, internucleosome spacing in your model? So like, will changing the internucleosome spacing affect the looping? So, you know, in heterochromatin, you, you may have uh, longer spacing. Yes. And, uh, and in some organisms, this is also where you have a uh, high density of, of loops and repressive tads, etc. So I just wonder whether in your model, in your simulation, you also see this uh, internucleosome spacing as an important parameter. You, you mean the space between nucleosomes? Yeah, 200 base pairs, something. Yeah, yeah, of course. We didn't uh, um, like study different experimental data but also uh, this synthetic with equidistance and with variant distance and how it may differ. And we saw the difference, so we know that there is a high impact of the nucleosome positions, but we cannot tell, like, uh, you know, it's, you can uh, use this model to use every possible se uh, segment on the genome. So it would be interesting also for collaborations if you want to study your segment, and we can do that with our computational model.